Have you wondered, how do I get more God winks, those little coincidences that aren't? Well, after a decade and a half of studying God winks, I've noticed that certain principles always emerge. And one of them is that God winks happen more often when you step out in faith. What does that mean? Getting out of your comfort zone, speaking up when it's not your nature. This collection of amazing God wink stories is going to make that point. Tim Jones, a pastor, was having open house at his church. He set up the music and blared out his favorite song, So Mercy, by the Gaither Vocal Band. So mercy. Now what he didn't know was that out there among the crowd was a guy by the name of Don Herbert who also loved that song. He came up on the porch and they said hello and they talked about common interest in gospel music. They exchanged names and they went on their way. Two weeks later, Don Herbert got devastating news from the Duke University Hospital that if he didn't have a donor for a kidney transplant, he was gonna die. His wife, Belinda, went on Facebook. She poured her heart out. She said, oh, my dear husband is gonna die if we don't get a donor. And we've tested all the family and friends and they all failed to meet the rigorous tests. At that very moment, Tim Jones was on Facebook and somehow or other, Belinda's note popped up. He was drawn to her note. He felt her heart and something inside him suggested that he should try to reach out and help. Maybe he could be a match. The first God wink, the blood was a match. So that sent him into the arduous testing that took several days over several weeks. Here's what they found out. Tim Jones was a perfect match, a one in 20,000 match for Don Herbert's kidney. Weeks later, their dual surgeries were scheduled. Here's how it would work. Tim would go in first. It would take about two hours to have his kidney removed, and then Don would go in. Meanwhile, the wives were outside waiting for Tim and his surgery, and they were praying, and they were waiting, and waiting, and waiting. Two hours became four hours, five hours, and then seven hours. They started worrying, what's going on? What's happening? Eventually, the doctors came out and they whisked Don in for his surgery and they explained that when they took Tim's kidney out, they found hidden behind it an aneurysm, a deadly aneurysm, which is like a balloon expanding, which is more like a time bomb. It is, when it goes off, it is almost always fatal. But because he had performed this selfless act of kindness and had his kidney taken out for a friend, they discovered the aneurysm and they were able to get it in time. The doctor said, Tim, today you saved Don's life, but in the process, you saved your own. And then there was another God wink. It was in the so mercy lyric that they hadn't noticed before. Here's what it says. If you ever reached to help a friend. If you've ever reached to help a friend, the hand you help may lift you up again. Ha, how about that? It was when Tim stepped out in faith to help a stranger that he had his life saved by the most amazing God wink. Now, sometimes stepping out in faith is simply saying a prayer when it's not the ordinary thing to do. And that's what happened to one of the world's most famous comedians. As a kid, Tim Conway, the famous comedian, grew up in a place called Chagrin Falls, Ohio. He said that was like a religious experience into itself because mothers looked out for other kids and the doctors would call on people at home. You know, the biggest event of the year in Chagrin Falls is the Spring Blossom Festival. And overnight on a Friday night, what comes up down by the river is a whole village, a carnival, a big Ferris wheel. 
It was so exciting as a 12-year-old boy going to that carnival with five dimes in Tim Conway's pocket. He spent the first two dimes on the Ferris wheel and on the cotton candy. And then he surveyed all of the game booths to see what he might be able to get. And then he spotted something he really wanted. It was a cross with a green ribbon that glowed in the dark. I would really love to have that, he said. And so he went to the man who had the outstretched dirty palm, and all he had to do was to take that fishing pole and hook that one duck out of 60 bobbing ducks on the water. He dropped the dimes into that hand, one after the other. He lost. He slumped all the way home, and his head was down and he was thinking, I really wish I had that cross with the green ribbon that glows in the dark. And then, what some people might think was a very small God wink, but to Tim Conway was life changing. He spotted something shiny on the edge of the sidewalk. You could almost see him in slow motion, reaching down and picking it up. It was a dime and he dashed all the way back to the carnival and the outstretched palm was ready to receive the dime when Tim thought, I think this calls for something bigger. And I wonder if God is listening. He went to a nearby maple tree and put his head against his forearm and he said, God, I would really like to have that cross with a green ribbon that glows in the dark. And he went back. He took the fishing pole. He dropped the dime in the palm and he got it. And Tim Conway says, that God wink was the most amazing thing that ever happened to me. That God wink was absolutely life-changing for Tim Conway. Now, let me ask you a question. Who do you think Tim Conway's hero was in life? Who he liked to emulate as a comedian? Don Knotts. Yep, Barney Fife was his hero. And Don Knotts had his own experience where he stepped out in faith and got God winks. Take a look. You know, they say American television's greatest icon is Barney Fife, the character created by Don Knotts for The Andy Griffith Show. I think I'd agree. Don Knotts was once a struggling actor working at the NBC restaurant hoping to pick up tidbits of information. He heard there was an audition going on down on Wall Street. It was closing at five o'clock. He looked at his watch and it was about four o'clock. He rushed outside, it was kind of a windy day like today, rushed to the subway, went down the stairs, got on the train, arrived at Wall Street, came up the stairs, crossed the street, up the stairs to the casting office. And there he was greeted by an officious secretary who said, I'm sorry, the casting is closed. And then in a voice that we might have recognized later as that of Barney Fife, he said, you mean to tell me I came all the way down here from uptown and the casting is closed? Well, he was so disappointed, he slumped out of the office, across the street, was starting down the stairs, and he heard something. He looked back. There was the officious secretary hanging out the window, waving him back. He went back upstairs. Now she was his best friend, she said, you look so sad. I prevailed upon the casting agent to do one more audition. He did the audition and he got the part. And the part was in a new Broadway show called No Time for Sergeants, playing opposite a young actor by the name of Andy Griffith. And that began a comedy team that lasted for over 50 years and led to Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show. What do you think of that, Andy? Well, that was some Godwink. What would have happened if Don Knotts had never stepped out in faith 
by taking that train and going way downtown for that audition. Would he and Andy have ever teamed up? Who knows? Sometimes stepping out in faith can produce God winks when you just talk to the person who is standing next to you in line. That's what happened to Debbie. Are you familiar with Fabergé eggs? Well, they were these elaborate Easter gifts made for the Tsar of Russia's wife about 150 years ago by a jeweler named Peter Fabergé. What are they worth today? Well, about $10 million. <laughs> That's what they sold for at auction. Well, out in Hollywood, there's a Hollywood production company named Weller Grossman. They sold the A&E channel, a biography series based upon Peter Fabergé, the jeweler. The task of researching all about the House of Fabergé fell upon Debbie Supnick. Well, this was before Google. She had a heck of a time trying to find anybody connected with the Fabergé family. After eight weeks, she was exasperated. Her husband was an attorney going to England on a trip, and he said, well, why don't you come along with me? Bring Kate along. So she said, I thought it would be a good chance for some mother-daughter time and to give my frustrations a rest. Well, in London, Debbie and Kate had a wonderful time with tourism. On the last day, Kate said, let's go down this street. Well, it was a little charming area called Burlington Arcade. So they went into this little charming shop, picked out an item, was standing in line to purchase it, standing behind a gentleman wearing an ascot with a cane. They were chatting away, and the gentleman turned and said, well, you're American. They said, yes, of course, and they chatted with him for a few minutes. And just before he left, he said, well, have a wonderful time. My name is Theo Fabergé. Fabergé? From the house of Fabergé, said Debbie. Yes, I am. Well, what do you know? Don't you love how Godwinks come into our lives? That was Theo Fabergé. He helped Debbie out and the producers, and they got that show done. Wow, what a Godwink. Sometimes when you step out in faith, getting out of your comfort zone is exactly when God will wink at you. I'm Squire Rushnell. Good wishes and God winks.